Hi, I'm James from Chaosium. I sat down with Jay and we talked about what makes good tabletop role-playing game art. Jay has experience as an art director on a variety of different role-playing game books, products, and game lines. She shares her experience in this video, but before I jump across to it, remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. It helps us out and it lets us make more content like this. Thanks. I would say for me, good game illustration, it includes an entire story. So I see a lot of people who have a focus, they'll have a character sort of posed and the background will be kind of general in the background. And to me, that is great for character design, but that isn't really world building art. And good game art, good game illustration will get you into the world. It'll get your mind thinking. You'll you'll look around and you'll you'll look at the table and you'll see some little thing on the table and you'll be intrigued by it or the things will make sense. So um, if it's an adventure and you're illustrating for an adventure, I would love to see that the art makes sense with the text, that you remember all the little details. And if there are more than one artist per adventure, then you have to make sure all the details match throughout because this is world building. We want to make sure that we see a diverse, beautiful landscape. So it's good if you see fine detail. It's good if you see something reflected from text. Are there any elements that as a trained art director, when you see them in an image, you go, this is good. This is what I want to see. What like what is good in an image when when my eye glosses over something and, and it just catches my attention and I have to stop and go back that ooh moment, you know, um, it's, it's an emotional reaction. Um, it isn't just that it's technically good, but it has somehow captured me emotionally. It's, it's a visceral kind of a feeling. And so it's a bit hard to put that into words, but that all comes from, you know, light and dark in your image, how you have that balance going, those, those tones are really important. And also how everything is laid out. So your composition is, should be able to draw the viewer's eye throughout the entire piece. You know, and I've seen very simple pieces um, with very few elements in them that an artist was able to get your eye to draw all the way around those, even in a simple piece. And it, it's about practice and nuance. I'll lean into that a little bit more. And I'd like to ask about artistic styles. Given what you've described about the interplay that you like to see in different features of an artwork, are there certain artistic styles or ways of doing things that you think are more difficult to get right in the TTRPG medium that don't necessarily suit it as well? One of the things that I have difficulty with is I prefer to have a very painterly style, even when I'm working on something like cyberpunk, which I also do work for, or The Witcher, which is based on a video game. Um, I'm doing work for Chaosium or Pendragon, any of those. I like to have a painterly look to them. I don't really want to have um, stiff models that you've gotten out of a CGI program layered with stuff and then with lots of um, um, effects over the top of that to sort of make it look like a conducive piece. I really need the artwork to feel like it's a piece of artwork. It's an illustration. If I wanted a photograph, I would have people take a photograph, right? It may differ a little bit when you're talking about things like um, um, item design, a weapon or something, that's gotta be a little bit more concise. And sometimes I will use, people will do those in 3D for, for the products that I work on so that they can get the real, real detail in the weapon, the gun or whatever it is. But really for the most part, I wanna see that painterly look. So it's like you have touched it, you've touched and sculpted every piece of that page, whether that's on the computer or on an actual piece of paper. I know in art there are a lot of rules from laws of threes to color theory to ideas about composition and all kinds of details which can improve an artwork, at least from a technical standpoint. 
Are there any of these rules that you feel are particularly important to TTRPGs or are there any unique rules that you think only apply to TTRPGs? Illustration for TTRPGs has a tendency to be a bit action oriented sometimes. And, and for me, it's less often action oriented. Like uh, when I say action, I mean, you know, fight scenes or car chases or, you know, those kinds, big battles, those kinds of things. There is some of that in the work that I do. But more often than not, I'm looking for what I call the everyday, the everyday cyberpunk, the everyday rune quest. How do people do dishes in, in rune quest? How do people, you know, um, dance? in Pendragon. I want to see those kinds of everyday activities, you know, people eating, gathering, because it life isn't only about the war. The wars are very small battles in between what you're doing in real life, you know, changing a baby's diaper, or, you know, whatever it is, right? So, and, and I, it's, it for me, for world building, I just love to see for my own characters and learning about the world, how those things are done. And that's really, really important. So now that we know a little bit what you might be looking for, can you share some examples of TTRPG products that you think have done it right? And I'll limit you slightly, uh, maybe make it easier and more complicated by saying, don't necessarily say anything that you've worked on specifically, uh, looking outwards. Okay, sure. Um, I, wow, it's a, it's a, big question. I've got to throw out some, some love for, uh, um, just one second. Let me just grab it right over here somewhere. I have got to throw out some love for Coyote and Crow. I don't know if you can show this in your video or not, but, um, this is a, Hey, this is a native based on native American cultures. Um, indigenous peoples worked on this, designed it, developed it. Some non-indigenous peoples worked on this as well, but this has got, uh, it's, it's an interesting concept and the art pulls the viewer into the world, but doesn't really define the world for you, which is, by the way, a pretty indigenous thing, like for, for Native American tribes. Um, it, culturally, have a tendency not to tell you what your world is, but to let you experience what it is for yourself, right? But I've just, I just got to put some hands together for this. It's, it's a really cool book. What if, <laughs> what if colonizers hadn't taken over America and Canada and Mexico? And, and that's where it goes from there. Uh, the other book I would have to say this conducively as an entire product uh, is uh, Eclipse Phase. And a lot of that has to do with the layout work. So I, I did development of software for a long time. I was a UX designer uh, up until just a few months ago, actually. And it doesn't matter how good your code is if the user can't figure out how to use the product. So I think a lot of times people think, oh, layout, that's kind of minor. That's just something we're going to do at the end. We're going to do it real quick. It'll be fine. I know a guy, right? But the truth is, if that layout isn't good, the user isn't going to be able to use your product. The gamer isn't going to be able to find anything in there, and they'll just be frustrated. So not only is Eclipse Phase well laid out, but it's gorgeous. It's It's got all kinds of beautiful add-ons, for the borders and different things like that, that just uh, make the whole world come together for it. So we've talked about some of the books that you think are doing everything right, that are following all the rules, at least to some degree. Is there a single product or a book out there that you can think of which breaks all the rules, but is still really effective? I honestly, don't really consider that there are a lot of rules. So that's a hard question to answer. I, I don't think the definition, uh, there is a single defined way to do a thing. As a matter of fact, um, if I can speak about RuneQuest a little bit, some of the upcoming books that we are creating for RuneQuest are based on the fact that uh, Jeff Richard and I really love these old uh, PK books, if you guys remember those, the layout on some of those things is astounding. And 
beautiful artwork, not only beautiful, but, and well illustrated, but clear, defined. You, you see this, 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 uh, you see this diagram and it's, you know, you, you, it's gorgeous, but you also can figure out what all the little parts are and you could learn something from it. And so we've, we've taken some lessons from ancestry in that respect and decided that we were just going to go ahead and make the book we've always wanted to read. And that feels pretty good, but that isn't really something that gets done a lot in RPGs. So it's, it's not a rule that we broke, but just an experiment that we're trying. 